Welcome to another IFR in Explain video and today we're going to do something extremely basic. Today we're going to do an NDB hold. We are right now in a Cessna 172 somewhere over North Carolina in a hard IMC as you can see out the window. We have a dual vacuum pump failure which means we've lost our attitude indicator and our directional gyro. Um, the autopilot still works because this type of autopilot, the rate-based autopilot, is driven off the turn coordinator and I have uh, not failed the turn coordinator because the turn coordinator is electrically driven, not by the vacuum system. So the vacuum system failure does not affect uh, the gyro in the turn coordinator. So what we can do is we can um, use control wheel steering on the autopilot as you uh, can see me doing here. Um, to help us with uh, flying the um, the airplane while we have the vacuum failure. As you can see, we're on a roughly easterly heading about 100 degrees. As you can see with the ADF needle, uh, we've just passed the station. So we want to uh, begin our first turn. I roll the airplane into a standard rate turn. I let go of the control wheel steering button. Uh, the autopilot, contro uh, the autopilot uh, controls the turn rate, keeps the airplane in the standard rate turn. Uh, more or less maintains the altitude. As you can see here in the uh, compass, we are swinging around the turn. Our goal is to roll out on a westerly heading, uh, time a minute, fly a minute outbound on a westerly heading, and um, then come back in uh, the turn on an inbound course of 090 um, and see how this works uh, using nothing but the ADF needle and the compass. Uh, as you've seen, the compass is kind of slowed down. It went through the south heading uh, fairly fast. Now it's kind of creeping up slowly onto the westerly heading. Uh, what you're seeing here is a simple uh, compass error. Um, what happens in the in the northern hemisphere? I'm going to flatten out the turn a little bit here. Um, uh, the lower your turn rate is, the lower your bank uh, angle is, uh, the more accurate the compass becomes. So right now, as you can see, with the help of the control wheel steering, I have uh, more or less leveled the wings, or rather uh, got the airplane to zero turn rate. I'm uh, now going to um, start the uh, one minute timer. I'm going to fly one minute outbound. Um, as you can see, the autopilot is doing a fairly good job keeping us on a westerly heading. Again, if this happened for real, dual vacuum system failure with the rate-based autopilot, um, help yourself with control wheel steering. Of course, heading mode doesn't work anymore. The, um, the directional gyro has failed, so if I set the heading bug to anything and press the heading button on the autopilot, it would just go, I don't know, it would just keep turning and never reach the heading bug, obviously. Um, but control wheel steering still works, so what I'm basically doing is I'm holding the uh, control wheel steering button down on my joystick, um, put the airplane into the turn rate that I need, then let go of the button and just keep let the autopilot uh, uh, keep flying the airplane. All right, we are still on a westerly heading, about 45 seconds have elapsed. We see we have now put the uh, NDB that we're holding over uh, nicely behind us. Um, after the minute, I'm going to uh, swing us around. I do another uh, standard rate turn to the right. Here comes the minute. Okay, I'm going to stop the clock. I'm going to put the airplane in a nice standard rate turn just about here. Again, I let go of the control wheel steering button. Now the airplane is on autopilot. Looks like I lost a little bit of altitude here. It's uh, correct for that. Okay, as you can see, the compass swings around again. The compass is going to slow down as it comes through the north and then accelerate again as it comes through about uh, 30 degrees. This is the typical compass uh, turn error of uh, the uh, northern hemisphere. We're going to see that in a second when I uh, try the hold again, uh, this time on a north-south heading uh, rather than an east-west heading. Uh, but for now, you can see we're about uh, halfway through the turn here. Um, so the goal is to roll the airplane out on an easterly heading on the compass, and that should uh, more or less put the ADF needle in the middle, um, which will also nicely show the, the ADF bank error that, we are, that we're seeing now. So um, if I roll the airplane level now, you would see that the uh, needle swings back. See the compass accelerating now, coming through the turn very fast, and as I roll 
the airplane out here on a zero turn rate just about now. Yep, we are on an about meh, 85 or so, and we need to go a little bit further to the right here to line us up with the, uh, there we go, to line us up with the holding inbound. We are right about here. Okay, zero turn rate. Wings are just about level. Nah, not quite. Okay, let's try this again. All right, now the wings are just about level. I'm just about on an easterly heading and uh, heading back to the NDB, maybe a little bit more to the right. There we go. Um, so centering this on east, centering the needle here. And that should um, that should uh, get us back to the station. And um, after about a minute of uh, straight and level flight, we will see the needle fall over. Looks like we need to correct to the right just a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, and yeah, really put the east here under the under the uh, uh, line under the lower line of the compass. All right, there we go. Okay, yeah, it is. Uh, there we go. Of course, yeah, flying flying without the attitude indicator. Uh, that's really a challenge. Okay, we can see the needle accelerating now coming around. Um, all right. So now what we're going to do, let's fly outbound here for half a... Whoops, that was the wrong button. Uh, how do I reset this? Uh, there we go. Um, we'll fly out for 30 seconds, uh, then make a right turn, and then we'll put ourselves on an east... W uh, on a north-south holding instead of an east-west holding and that should um, show the compass error a little bit better. Okay, about 20 seconds. Uh, okay, then I'm going to make a right turn, level us out on a southerly heading um, and the way it's going to work, the uh, compass is... Um, uh, we will need to turn over the southerly heading, there's our 30 seconds, um, so I put the airplane in a standard rate turn just about here. Okay, let's go. Whoops, that was not a great job in the pitch axis here. There we go, that's better. Um, so we are on a standard rate turn and you will see the, um, we are not on a southerly heading yet. The compass is going to be very fast through here. We're going to overturn about 30 degrees and when the compass indicates about 210, we're going to roll out and the compass is going to swing back to south. Um, that's simply what happens in the northern hemisphere. There we go. As you can see, as I'm rolling the wings level now, whoop, the compass kind of swings back towards the south. And there we are on a southerly heading. I'm going to start the uh, timer again. All right, let's fly south for a minute, uh, then make a right turn towards the uh, north and see if we can uh, roll the plane out on a uh, north inbound course to the NDB this time and make a, a holding in a, in a north-south axis. Um, okay, so what you see, saw here that turning to the south, we have to overturn the compass. We have to turn further um, than the head heading we're in actually intending to level off on. Um, and to the north, you're going to see the exact opposite. The compass is going to become very slow and we have to actually level off before we reach the northerly heading. So if I make a right turn, uh, we're going to see the compass go to about 330, then we're going to level the wings and the compass is going to swing the rest of the way uh, all the way to the north. All right, a little bit of rain here apparently that we're getting on the windshield. Nice. All right, we're coming up through a minute here. I'm going to reset the timer. All right, and now I'm going to put the airplane in another standard rate turn. There we are, just about standard rate to the right, maybe a little more bank. There we go. All right, we're now in a standard rate turn to the right. Um, the compass will indicate approximately correct on a westerly heading. That's why I flew the first hold. Uh, on an east-west heading, so that would make the level off on an east-west heading uh, very easy because when the compass indicates west, you're flying west. Very simple. Um, so right now we're actually going through a westerly heading. Uh, if I bring up the map to cheat, you see that this is actually true. The uh, airplane was pointing west there. Um, okay, and when the compass, I'm losing altitude, uh, and when the compass levels off at about, uh, when the compass indicates about 330, I'm going to level the wings and that is actually going to um, 
uh, going to be the north heading because the compass is going to uh, swing the rest of the way to the north. So here comes 330. Let me level the wings. And as you can see, whoop, the compass swings the rest of the way to the north. Uh, actually, a little bit further. I actually overshot here a little bit by about 10 degrees. So let's uh, bring this back. And there we go. Go wings level just about okay. The wings are just about level. I have just about leveled the airplane off back without climb or descent. I'm on a north heading, uh, but my turn was too small, so I'm not actually heading to the NDB now. But a quick check of the map shows yep that we're actually flying north. Okay, so the turn was a little bit too tight. I gave it too much turn rate. Okay, let's try this again. Um, okay, and now what you're going to see is, uh, I just accidentally killed the autopilot, Let's put the autopilot back in control wheel steering, um, and just about bring us back here, there we go, back in altitude, okay, and there we go. All right, heading towards the NDB station now. There we go. We're about 30 degrees off from <laughs> where we wanted to be. That was because I flew the turn too tight with too high of a turn rate. Um, all right, but that actually gives me the chance to show you something else. And that was what I was talking about in the last video, the um, the uh, ADF dip error. Well, we're too close to the station right now to see much of anything because the needle just moves way too fast. There we go, coming through the station. All right, I'm going to put us here in a standard rate turn to the right. Looks like I. Uh, there we go. All right, standard rate turn to the right, and uh, let's put us in. Here. Oh, okay, slight climb. Uh, yeah, that's good. 100 feet per minute. Uh, okay, coming back through north and um, going all the way to the south. And again, we of course have to level off before it actually turns south. Uh, we're not going to keep flying holdings. I mean, you all know what a holding, uh, how holding works. Um, but we're going to get enough distance between us and the NDB station so I can show you the new and improved ADF uh, bank error or ADF dip error. It's the same thing when they call it bank error or dip error. It's the same thing. Uh, in X-Plane, all right, we can see the compass here accelerating nicely. Um, and again, we overturn the south uh, by about 20 to 30 degrees uh, before we level off. And the compass is going to swing back to the south as we do so. Uh, right about here, let's level the wings slowly. And the compass is going to swing back to the south. Yep, there you go. Does exactly that. All right, so um, we're going to, oops, and of course I way overdid it here because I'm flying with the variometer, which is not a good idea. It's too laggy. Um, this is a little bit easier if you can feel, if you can actually feel the G load on your butt while you're doing this. Um, and I have tried this on my last instrument proficiency check um, that I flew in a six-pack airplane with traditional instruments. Uh, we covered up the uh, vacuum gauges and um, I flew by the turn coordinator only and the airplane happened to have an autopilot, not, not the STEC 55, but a similar also rate-based autopilot where you can actually use the autopilot even if the uh, vacuum gauges have failed. All right, we now have a bit of a distance between us and the... Um, and the station, so I'm going to position us um, at an angle where you can actually see the ADF bank error. And if you watched very closely as I rolled into the turn, you will have seen the ADF bank error already because as I rolled into the turn, uh, the needle swung back kind of towards the tail here. Um, so basically what it does, if you roll into the turn, the, uh, the needle is going to, uh, going to align more uh, with your with the axis of your plane. So right now we're perpendicular to the station. Right now we have zero bank error. Obviously, if you're perpendicular to the station, the bank doesn't change uh, the projection of, of, of the needle towards, uh, towards onto the ground. All right, here we're actually going to see this. I'm going to take the autopilot off completely. Uh, there we go. And if I now just roll the wings, and I mean the airplane is not going to move, but just by rolling the wings, you can now nicely see uh, the effect of the ADF bank error as I keep 
uh, just just swinging the swinging the bank angle around, you can see um, you can see what that does to the needle. And uh, if I do it a little bit more extreme, so you would think that right about now I'm pointed towards the station. Right, let's level the wings, and uh, you can see how the needle swings back. I was not pointing at the station already, even though the needle indicated like perfectly level. Uh, there we go. So now I'm wings level, and now I'm actually pointing towards the station. So that effect here, it's subtle. Uh, but it's there. That's uh, that's the ADF bank error, ADF dip error that I explained in the last video. Okay, for the last thing I wanted to show you today. Oops, no, heading mode's not going to work. I need to be in control wheel steering. There we go, control wheel steering. Um, uh, the compass actually work quite nicely here if you know how to anticipate a north turn or, or uh, turning north, turning south. Uh, I'm going to re uh, place the plane now at a, uh, an airport where that doesn't really work. I'm going to put us very far north. I'm going to put us into a uh, yellow knife, um, which is of course very far up north in Canada. And uh, what we're going to have here, the problem that we have here is the magnetic dip another form of dip error. Um, the magnetic dip is so large here if we, uh, in, in northern Canada, close to the magnetic north pole, that the magnetic field is pointing more down than it's actually pointing north. So the turning error here is going to be much larger than it just was on the about 30th parallel or 35th parallel as I was down in uh, North Carolina demonstrating the compass turning error. Um, so now we're going to try a compass turning in uh, northern Canada and you're going to see that uh, yeah this is a very bad idea because it's not going to not going to work as great. All right, I'm running up out of things to say. There we go. All right, the airplane is fixed. the vacuum system is fixed because we've loaded a new uh, we have loaded a new uh, flight and of course something is wrong. There we go. now it's actually loaded. Okay, so um, as you can see, we are on about a 160 heading. Compass tends to agree. And I'm going to do the same thing I, I did earlier. I'm going to use the autopilot in control wheel steering mode to put the plane in a um, standard rate turn. And I want you to watch the compass. You already see how squirrely the compass is here just by those tiny corrections that I'm making. All right, I'm going to put the airplane into just a standard rate hole and you can already see what a standard rate turn and you can already see how crazy the compass goes if I just change the bank slightly. So and the reason is the magnetic field is pointing mostly down and not really very north here. So I'm putting the airplane in a 20 degrees uh, bank turn. All right, the airplane is now in a stabilized turn. We're going through south, west and then north and I want you to watch what the compass does and uh, what it actually does here, it has pretty much locked up. It does not work anymore. It's uh, <laughs> pointing to the west now. Um, and uh, well, we'll just make a full 360 turn. And you will see that the compass is close to useless at this latitude because of the huge magnetic dip. So coming through north. Uh, and yeah, the compass is pretty much, pretty much locked up now. Yeah. So coming to north, and now we're actually going over north. Uh, the compass is still turning, just barely. It's now on about a two nine a zero heading, which is more than ninety degrees off. This is crazy. And now it has reverse turning. You see, the compass is now uh, has actually now reversed its turn. It's now indicating west as we come through an easterly heading. It has completely reversed direction. It is not only locked up; it's now reverse turn because now it is shorter uh, to come around to the other way. And just let me show you what happens if I unlock the compass by leveling the wings. How crazy this this uh, swing around here is. Um, yeah, so try flying compass turns up here in yellow knife. Uh, not really working. Uh, not really working because the magnetic dip here is close to 80 degrees or so. So we have about 10 degrees that the uh, compass is pointing north and it's uh, pointing about 80 degrees down into, into the Earth. The magnetic field lines are pointing about 80 degrees down here and, and that's why that's why you see uh, the compass misbehaving like that. I mean, look at that. That is crazy. 
All right, so much for the uh, compass dip and ADF dip and uh, hummus dip and all other kinds of uh, dip uh, in X-Plane 12, soon coming to an X-Plane installation near you.